Pac saved my life. The reason why I say Pac saved my life. I got shot in the head, got sprayed some other places, but I still got the bullet in my head. It's still there. You know that classic adage about how falsehoods can circulate endlessly, but at some point, reality bursts through the facade? Well, guess what? 29th September 2023 might just mark the eagerly anticipated moment. Recent reports have just revealed that they've apprehended the perpetrator behind Tupac's tragic demise. And brace yourselves, because it appears that the spotlight might be narrowing in on Diddy as well. How? Because Suge Knight will reportedly testify in this case. All them nats. You know, they, they can't really touch me. Y'all, at the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the track record. You're probably wondering what's happening. The murder of the iconic rapper Tupac Shakur has remained an unsettling, unsolved riddle that has sent shivers down the spine of the music industry and his dedicated fans for well over two decades. Nonetheless, there are recent indications that the elusive truth may, at long last, be stepping out of the darkness. Do you feel like Puffy owe you? Yeah, he should. I think he should look out. He look out for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? In an astonishing turn of events befitting the realm of sensational scandals, Las Vegas detectives have apprehended none other than Dwayne Keith D. Davis, a 60-year-old gang leader known for his involvement in various illicit activities. This arrest has reverberated through the entertainment industry and offered a ray of hope to those who have yearned for justice in the unsolved Tupac murder case. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis. Mopreem Shakur, Tupac's stepbrother, found himself grappling with a whirlwind of emotions regarding the arrest. He described it as bittersweet his raised eyebrow conveying the fact that they had been well aware of Keith D's involvement for many years. The million dollar question that continues to loom large is, why did it take authorities so long to apprehend a suspect who had been openly divulging his role in the crime? We were just all in the car together. Okay. This was the white Cadillac? Yeah. According to Mo Prem, the arrest hasn't provided the closure that many had hoped for. Instead, it has stirred up past traumas. For decades, Tupac's family has borne the weight of mourning the loss of an iconic figure without any semblance of retribution. Over the years, a multitude of conspiracy theories have swirled around the murder, and a solitary arrest is unlikely to alter people's perspectives. Mo Prem firmly believes that more individuals were involved in his brother's murder, and he is urging authorities to intensify their investigation to identify everyone possible. We deal with the loss. <clears throat> um, uh, my, my, my nieces, nephews, my sister, my brothers, you know, we all miss him. Furthermore, his sister, Sakiwa Shakur, does find some solace in Keith D's arrest. She wrote, This is no doubt a pivotal moment. The silence of the past 27 years surrounding this case has spoken loudly in our community. It's important to me that the world, the country, the justice system, and our people acknowledge the gravity of the passing of this man, my brother, my mother's son, my father's son. Homicide Lieutenant Jason Johansson delivered a candid and captivating press conference in the wake of Keith D's arrest. He unequivocally identified Davis as the, quote, leader and shot caller, leaving the room abuzz with inquiries. Intriguingly, a substantial portion of the case's facts had been in the possession of law enforcement since the initial stages of the investigation. However, the case took an unforeseen twist when Keith D began making admissions to his involvement in 2018. Members of the South Side Compton Crips, which included Dwayne Davis, along with his nephew Orlando Anderson, were also in attendance at the same event. Sheriff Kevin McMahill added his perspective, emphasizing that this case was by no means concluded. He provided assurance to the public that they were diligently constructing a case for a successful prosecution. The grand jury in Nevada evidently found merit in the evidence as they ultimately indicted Davis for the murder following several months of intense deliberation. His arrest, somewhat unexpectedly, occurred while he was casually taking a stroll near his residence. This investigation, subsequent arrest, and now indictment is only the beginning of the process. 
and we are committed and invested in ensuring a successful prosecution. Nonetheless, certain insiders have alleged that rap mogul Suge Knight has been discreetly contacted by law enforcement officers as part of their inquiry into suspect Keith D. According to these sources, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police have made efforts to establish contact with the former Death Row Records boss, possibly seeking his involvement as a witness or corroborator in the case they are constructing against the Compton gangster. Mary and Suge Knight were closely affiliated with the Mob Piru criminal street gangs, and that they had an ongoing feud with the South Side Compton Crips. In recent months, a magazine has asserted that law enforcement officials have engaged in conversations with Knight's family members and legal team regarding the potential for him to share information about Keith D's activities on the night of the 1996 murder. A well-placed legal source said, Suge is the best eyewitness in this case, given he stared down the barrel of the gun when Keith and his nephew pulled up alongside them on that fateful night in Las Vegas. While members of Keith's crew are all dead, Suge remains the only witness still alive to have got a prime view of the crime. It's delicate to have Suge as a witness because of this troubled past and his actions in court over the years. The truth remains, he is the one man who could identify Keith as being in the car at that time. That evidence would be significant and effectively be key corroboration to the DA's case. So what distinguishes Keith D from the typical suspects in this case is his remarkable willingness to publicly divulge information. He openly acknowledged his presence at the scene of the 1996 drive-by shooting that resulted in Tupac's tragic demise but he didn't stop there. He went as far as confessing to transferring the murder weapon to another gang member, shedding light on the concealed secrets within the hip-hop industry. He's hanging out the window like he was a beret. Tupac. Yeah, he was. So what happens next? And we just came and yeah, shit. But hold on. The revelations don't stop there. In the stunning 29 tell-all memoir titled Compton Street Legend, Keith D. laid bare the details of his involvement. He asserted that he had been cruising in the very same Cadillac implicated in the shooting. In this explosive literary work, he disclosed that he had, in fact, informed authorities about his role in the case as early as 2010 during a highly confidential meeting with federal and local law enforcement. However, Davis claimed that the authorities had pledged immunity in return for his cooperation, leading to raised eyebrows regarding the handling of the case. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, you got it in a book, you, you didn't play it at everything else, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now when the cops are forcing Suge to testify, there is one person who seems to get bashed soon, and that is Diddy. But why Diddy? Well, everyone knows that at the night of shooting, Suge was also in the car. People believe that he might be panicking now because Suge knows everything that happened that night. One person wrote on social media, Takes a coward to shoot somebody when they're not looking. I bet they wouldn't do that telling him, Hey, let's do this and give him a shot, and he was shot twice. Once he lived the second time, it took him so many times to get his down and they couldn't get around Pac, nobody could make music because him and Biggie were so damn good. I really hope that Sean Combs is found for all his wrongdoings, and I really believe he K his baby's mama, Kim Porter. You can't tell me no different. May God not have no mercy as they had none for Tupac. Another one penned his emotions as, So did he? you thought you was slick, goody goody, now the police know your tricks, goody goody, now you're going to jail, and there will be no bail, goody goody, for you, goody goody, and that's going to be so true. Yeah, Tupac Shakur, a young 25-year-old, met his tragic end on the night of September 7, 1996 in Las Vegas, when he was struck by four bullets to the chest. His untimely passing sent shockwaves around the world, and now, Keith D's boldness in openly discussing his involvement in the crime is sending tremors through the music industry, particularly given the high-profile nature of the case. It looked like he was reaching, yeah. Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah. Did you actually see a gun? No, oh, shit. Once he got the reaching, I got the ducking. In a development that resembles a plot from a Hollywood thriller, Las Vegas police executed a dramatic operation at the Henderson, Nevada home of none other than Keith D's wife, Paula Clemens, this past July. This operation was a pivotal element of the ongoing investigation into Tupac's murder, as authorities sought to unearth evidence that could potentially link Davis to the crime. Las Vegas police confirmed today they executed a search warrant on Monday in connection with the case. Police searched a home in the city of Henderson that's about 15 miles southeast of the Vegas Strip. During the search, the police made a significant discovery. They uncovered a cache of 40 caliber bullets on the property. 
vital pieces of evidence that will undergo thorough forensic analysis to ascertain any potential connection to Tupac Shakur's tragic demise. The decision by authorities to conduct a raid at Keith D's wife's residence speaks volumes about the unwavering intensity of their pursuit in this case. This is video just into our newsroom of that response last night. Detectives and prosecutors say they determined they had enough information to proceed. It sends a clear signal that law enforcement is drawn closer to Davis, who had previously asserted that Sean Diddy Combs distanced himself from him years ago. These unfolding developments suggest that Keith D's revelations could have far-reaching implications that extend beyond his own involvement in the crime. And now we arrive at the most pivotal aspect of this riveting narrative. Do you feel like Puffy owe you? Yeah, he should. I think he should look out. He look out for everybody. Else. The potential link between Sean Diddy Combs and Tupac Shakur's murder. Diddy, the music mogul extraordinaire, has skillfully treaded the fine line of legal scrutiny regarding his alleged involvement in the crime. However, recent developments in the story are thrusting him back into the searing spotlight. A multitude of individuals, ranging from ordinary onlookers to A-list celebrities, have spun a complex web linking Tupac's murder to Diddy in various ways. Everybody already having the, the you know, the in the back of their mind, like, that he had something to do with it, like, it basically evident. The theories surrounding Diddy's potential involvement gain credibility when one delves into the enigmatic motives and concealed intentions beneath the surface. Detective Greg Carding, a former member of the Los Angeles Police Department, deeply involved in the Tupac Shakur murder investigation, sheds light on the intricate web of Diddy's alleged role. Carding proposes that Diddy's possible motive could have been to protect himself from the ire of Suge Knight, who was actively seeking retribution for the 1995 death of a friend in Atlanta, an incident for which he held Diddy accountable. Greg said, Perhaps what they were doing was saying, He's already tied the noose, now let's let him hang himself. You didn't just say it twice. You didn't just say it five times. And so now you've got this compilation of so many confessions. The perception is that it's going to be hard for him at this point to say, hey, I was just kind of boasting, making stuff up. Following Tupac's tragic passing, Suge Knight reportedly delved deep into his finances, shelling out a substantial $13,000 to enlist the services of a hitman. The hired assassins, a Bloods member by the name of Wardell Puchifus, was allegedly tasked with eliminating Christopher Wallace, widely known as Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls was not only a celebrated artist, but was also a close associate of Diddy. I want Biggie killed. I want you to go ahead and get a hold of my boy Poochie from the neighborhood. He knows Poochie's a known shooter, and he agrees to pay her $25,000. The real intrigue lies in how Diddy became aware of Suge Knight's vengeful intentions. It's almost as if he had a crystal ball foreseeing the impending danger. This awareness does raise a significant question mark, hinting that Diddy might have had access to inside information, potentially through someone connected to Suge Knight's inner circle. And who could better fit that description than Keith D, the central figure of the moment, renowned for his reputed gang affiliations? Yeah, I think he should look out, you know what I'm saying? He, he worth a billion dollars, he should come look out, come build a, build a basketball gym at our parkers, do something, you know what I'm saying? One of the most persistent mysteries surrounding Tupac's murder revolves around the whereabouts of the murder weapon itself. Although the police were able to retrieve bullets and casings from the crime scene, the actual Glock firearm employed in the shooting has proven to be as elusive as a phantom in the darkness. Contradictory reports and speculations have continued to circulate regarding the status of this elusive weapon. In 1998, a 40 caliber gun was shockingly discovered in the garden of a Compton residence, sparking speculation that it could be the murder weapon. However, ballistic tests on this firearm promptly ruled it out as a potential match. Detectives meticulously compared the casings found at the crime scene to the markings that the gun would have left on fired bullets, and the results were a resounding no match. In a stunning revelation showcased in the documentary, Who K. Tupac? Keith D. unleashed a bombshell that resonated like a thunderclap through the airwaves. He alleged that the very murder weapon had inexplicably disappeared on the night of the murder itself. The detective himself emphasized that in the absence of the murder weapon, any links drawn between the recovered bullets and the murder could be deemed circumstantial at best. He starts blasting. Um, you say Shug looks over, he sees you. 
In essence, the mysterious vanishing of the murder weapon has created a substantial obstacle, significantly impeding the advancement of the investigation and making it a daunting task to establish conclusive evidence. However, the plot thickens even more. In a startling revelation, former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson appears to claim that he possesses substantial evidence linking none other than Diddy to Tupac's demise. I knew him before he was um, Diddy. I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. In an honest and candid interview with DJ Vlad, Mike Tyson made a heartfelt admission, acknowledging that he carries a sense of partial responsibility for the tragic passing of the legendary rapper. This unforeseen revelation has left the world in a state of shock and rekindled intrigue in the unresolved mysteries surrounding Tupac's untimely demise. His mother wrote me from prison and explained that Tupac was at the Indiana Black Expo and wanted to meet me, and that's the first day I met him. This admission not only brings fresh perspective to the circumstances surrounding Tupac's death, but also reveals the complex tapestry of the intertwined lives of these two influential personalities. The friendship between a renowned boxer and a passionate activist may have appeared unconventional, yet it was undeniably authentic. Their connection originated when Iron Mike was already a household name, while Tupac was still striving to establish himself. Their paths converged in a nightclub where the aspiring rapper captivated the baddest man on the planet with his remarkable musical talents. Really good friends. Um, I didn't hang out with him much. He didn't hang out, but we were always welcome when we saw each other. He's always welcome to be with me. In a recent Drink Champs interview, which was released on Sunday, June 11th, Iron Mike Tyson revealed fascinating details about his 1992 prison experience. He shared a remarkable encounter with the iconic West Coast artist that caused a stir during his visit. At an after party held at the Palladium on Sunset in California, Mike instructed security to grant access to a group of young men through the back entrance, and among them was none other than Tupac himself. Once he came into the visiting room and there was all these hillbilly hicks, me Aryan guys, as soon as he came up, everybody started clapping, Tyson said. They respected him. As soon as he came in the room, they started applauding. Previously, Mike Tyson had recounted this anecdote during an episode of his Hot Boxing podcast in conversation with DJ Woo Kid, as well as former NBA players Matt Barnes and Stack Jackson. This conversation occurred after the New York DJ had highlighted the extraordinarily rare artwork in Tyson's possession, which featured the captivating Machiavelli album cover art of Tupac. The guards are saying that sh Hey, stop, sit down. He was, woo, he was a force, Tyson told Barnes, Jackson, and Woo Kid of the encounter. If he loved you, it was all love. But if he didn't like you, he looked for beef sometimes. He wanted you to know he was there. He continued, Everywhere I go, out in Africa and Europe, people ask, what was Tupac like? How was Tupac everywhere all over the world? This is what he wanted. He wanted to be immortal. To this day, Tyson carries the weight of regret, haunted by the thought that if only he had arrived a few minutes earlier, he might have been able to help Tupac and prevent his tragic death. The pain of not being able to protect his friend and witnessing the aftermath of that fateful night still lingers in his heart. That was part of my world. My world just happens. But just because it was Tupac and I was attached to it, it was different. The plot continues to thicken in this labyrinth of a saga, as questions abound and theories swirl about the events leading up to the murders of two of hip-hop's most iconic figures. While the mysteries surrounding these cases persist, the families and fans of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls continue to seek closure and justice for their untimely deaths. It remains to be seen how these revelations will impact the ongoing investigations and whether they will finally bring those responsible for these tragic murders to justice. One thing is for certain. The legacy of Tupac Shakur will continue to live on in the hearts and minds of their fans, and the music industry will forever bear the scars of their untimely departures.